This is Twit. Zuckerberg AI hires disrupt meta with swift exits. <laughs> Yeah, is, never mind. Uh, this is what happens when you home. offer people a lot of money. Uh, longtime acolytes are sidelined as big tech chief, this is from Financial Times, directs biggest leadership reorg in two decades. Within days of joining Meta, the co-creator of OpenAI's ChatGPT, Sheng Jia Zhao, threatened to quit and go back to OpenAI. He went as far as to sign employment paperwork to go back to OpenAI. Shortly afterwards, according to four people familiar with the matter, he was given the title of Meta's new chief AI scientist. How about a title? How about a title? Would that help? Uh, uh, in addition to that $100 million you got. Yeah. Someone mentioned, a friend of mine um, who works in media, was mentioning that um, tech has seemed to enter its pro sports <laughs> yes that's exactly <laughs> it. Yeah. where you're gonna have compensation packages that are going to be you know a hundred million dollars over a few years and that's then going to be you know you're gonna have to buy that out in some ways to get these very talented people and then another friend i was talking to who works in finance about this very thing was mentioning that the finance world has figured this out where they will give these giant compensation packages to people, but then they won't do it all at once. They do it in a way where they're not going to, you know, be, they, they vest, they, they, I'm sure, I'm sure Facebook is vesting them as well, but um, they, they're used to these type of things. So you don't give some young hotshot a hundred million dollar package. You give them some way to earn the hundred million dollars, but not immediately so that they don't. Cause like, I mean, I don't know. I have, if you gave me a hundred bucks, I'd probably quit my job. You know, I can't imagine what happens when you get, when you get a hundred million dollars, <laughs> why would you stay and work? Like what happens yeah. if life happens? Like, exactly. what, like, like it's so much money. And, um, I don't think human, I don't think we are smart enough to survive this. <laughs> That's really the problem. Um, the people you're getting. So, so this story goes on Ethan Knight, a machine learning scientist who joined meta a couple of weeks ago, gone. Mm -hmm. Avi Verma, a former AO, open AI researcher, went through Meta's onboarding process but never showed up for his first day. <laughs> I love that. That's one of my favorite things. Like, I just yes. love that that's a thing that you can do these days. It's just be like, ah, I didn't really want Where's it. Avi? Didn't uh, we give him the beanie? Yeah. Well, my, you know, and you wonder, well, well, what was it that changed, right? You, uh, you realized, well, what, oh, my God, what? I can't work for Mark. Or is it, what's his name? The, the, the child AI boss, Wang. Oh, it could be. In a tweet on Wednesday on X, Rashab Argawal, a researcher scientist who started at Meta in April, announced his departure. He said that while Zuckerberg and Wang's pitch was, quote, incredibly compelling, he, quote, felt the pull to take on a different kind of risk. <laughs> I think he's going to go mountain climbing, isn't he? He's going to take the money and run. Uh, and then there you also have the problem, which is longtime Meta staffers unhappy yeah. with these yeah. huge salaries are going. Well, it's More kind than of, half a dozen veteran employees announced they're leaving in recent days. It just strikes. I keep on saying this. I just think that that Zuckerberg is desperate. It doesn't. It doesn't strike me as a strategy. It doesn't strike me as you know. I I, I know where I'm putting all this money, and we're going to go here. Mm -hmm. I think it's we're getting left out of AI. They've had four overhauls, four reorgs in six months. Yeah, but I think we have to remember that they changed their name to Meta, and then the Metaverse didn't play out. <laughs> yep. I don't think they've had a solid strategy no. for the future since, in a while. And I don't, feed. I think that's kind of okay. I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean, doing a business is hard, whatever size you're on and they're at a scale that's unprecedented. And so I think that, that struggling is, is a vow. That's, that's like, that's okay that they're struggling. Um, I don't mean that that's good that they're struggling. I mean that I would expect them to struggle. It's to be expected. Yeah. It's hard. What they're trying to do is very difficult with very stiff competition that is very robust and has a lot of the stuff that they're trying to do figured out, or more importantly, doesn't have the um, burden of the regulatory framework that they have to exist within, um, as well as some other issues. Um, but I'm just, I'm guessing, and this is, this is totally a guess that, you know, I think Jeff, you said it, like he's, he's just like swinging in the dark here. He's trying to, he's trying to hit something and make it go. Um, but he has a I, vast checkbook that, I mean, he can. Yeah. He can, but, but how's that working? Yeah. 
you know, I think that that we just throw scale at things and we're going to win. And I think that's, that's a seduction. It used to be that I have so many friends that worked at Facebook and the reason they worked at Facebook, besides the fact that they paid a lot of money was because they could, they could make small products, small changes, and it would touch billions of people. And they were so happy with this. That's compelling. That was a super attractive, compelling thing. And I, I find that, I find it compelling myself. You know, the times that I've had the most fun at work have been with large teams with doing really cool stuff for lots and lots of people. In our case, it's only about 30 people that we end up touching, but it's, you know, it's, <laughs> it's still, that's a lot It's more than 10. Um, but I, but I think there's this, um, that's not as relevant anymore, right? Like the fact that you could go work at Facebook and ultimately you're going to be participating in selling ads, whether you want to or not, right. You can participating in upholding a, a relatively, um, I don't know, dried out business model. You go to Google and it's the same thing. You're just trying to support ad clicks. Um, You could go to Apple and maybe you get to work on compelling hardware, but maybe you get stuck on a team that's doing app store ads. Um, You know, and and you have this, these, these ad based business models that seem to refuse to die. And I think that'll for a lot of these people, they're like, I could do that. Or I could go work at a humanoid robotic company that we're building, whatever it is, you know, people, machines that are helping people, killing machines, whatever it might be that you're doing. Optimus. Let's go to Optimus. I think that that's just probably much more compelling if you're 27 and a multi, multi, multi multi-millionaire sitting in the Bay. You, you probably like, do I need a hundred million dollars? It wouldn't hurt. But what would maybe much better is actually feeling like we're achieving something good and working with people I respect. Um, you know, I, my advice for people all the time, young people specifically, is like optimize for working with a team you respect. And I think that you can make a decision based on money and then you get inside there and you realize you don't respect any of those people that are around you. And that's just, a, that's, you're not going to have fun. You're not going to enjoy it. You're going to hate your job every day. And if you have $100 million, they probably have a lot of options to get a new job. What's what's Zuckerberg's uh, seniority as a founder still in charge? How does that compare with others? Is there anybody else right now of these big? Is has Jensen Wong been a founder longer than Zuckerberg? Oh yeah, I think so. Has he? Okay. I think so. I mean, I think a lot of these guys have. I mean, uh, but Google switched over. Yeah. Um, the t- the, just going to the wrong yeah. tree. Elon Musk know, is, has been a founder he, for a very long time. Yeah. Well, Musk, uh, but not of the same company. Yeah. Um, but I also think there's a there's a um, a little bit of of the boy king kind of thing of yeah. of, of like that's where I'm trying to head. Yeah, yeah. Is is I think there's a fundamental question about Google and Facebook, which is the same question, which is are they relevant? Just are they like they have this business model that is from the past? It's somewhat anachronistic at this moment. Not that we have a new model to replace it. Like I don't mean I mean I don't mean that. I just mean that if you were starting a company today, the first business model you would grasp for is not ad based. Um, it would be not. That's right. No, it's have, my contention is that the ad base we have, the attention economy was was borrowed from mass media. Mm-hmm. That we haven't mm-hmm. invented no, sure. new models that are fully or native to the internet. And so I think that this creates this this discontinuity with how when you're trying to hire talent, if you're saying, yeah, we have all this great stuff, we have all the GPUs in the world, we're building these beautiful models, we're doing open source, we're doing all of this stuff, we're a leader in this space, but we still have to get users to click on ads. And you're kind of like, but I don't want to do that. I want I want to build something that's changing the world or or what have you. It doesn't matter what it is. Like it could be it could be I want to build something that's horrible and destructive. That Facebook might be a good place to be. Then I don't know. A lot of speculation in this Financial Times uh, article about what is uh, going wrong. Some of it is what you suspected, Jeff uh, Alexander Wang, the twenty eight year old uh, wunderkind that they Aqua hired away from Scale AI. Um, I love was, that move, by the way, the like, oh, you started a company and it's impossible to exit. What if we just exited you, only you, like the character <laughs> AI guys did this. Like it's, I just love it. I'm just like, what a great creepy. way to do it. Oh, it works. Bye, uh, apparently, I brought on. Apparently Wang's uh, secretive new department has not been named. So it's called TBD. TBD. <laughs> That'll stick. <laughs> You know that's going to stick. That's our yeah, new brand been. for uh, Beta. <laughs> uh, it, uh, there is, uh, according to, again, Financial Times says, multiple insiders describe Zuckerberg as deeply invested and involved in the TBD team, 
Others criticize him for micromanaging. Uh, some, uh, they say, uh, of the friction is maybe perhaps because of Wang's leadership style. It has chafed with some. He does not have previous experience managing teams across a big tech uh, company. Something's happening. People what, get what there, they him, get the orientation, and they who go, Who died yeah, made no. him godchild? What was it about? Uh, I, I still don't why? understand that. We still don't know why he, Scale AI was the miracle $14 right. billion. Dollar. It was a labeling company. It, 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 well, well, but... but mm. I think that there's a lot. There's a couple interesting things that I that 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 um, the Empire of AI book talked about, right? Which is that AI from most consumers is just the chat box in ChatGPT, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? But the data, the labeling, all of that infrastructure that is there is hard and yep. to make. And Scale AI, for better or for worse, was a leader in that space. And I'm sure that Facebook, because I'm sh they're very smart also was a leader there. And so I think the um, synergies that they are finding within these people, and even this goes for Johnny Ive or, or you know, at OpenAI as well, is it is probably um, a talent that they don't have internally. And I think that's the yeah. thing that is probably uh, more interesting. But externally, it seems asinine and it seems much more like, you know, talented baseball player A got mad at the GM and now is on, ta on talented baseball team B um, with a bunch of people that, you know, then and it, it removes the team aspect. Um, you know, and, and uh, you know, honestly, when PayPal bought my company, we had to deal with this internally as well, where we just kind of were parachuted in and there, and all these people we worked with are like, who the F are you? Why are you participating in this, in this thing? I was here 17 years. You just got here <laughs> yesterday. Um, you know, and that, that's a real thing. And so I'm sure that the people at Meta who are, were probably much more compensated than we were, um, are, are dealing with this in every direction. Right. right. So the people who are pulled in there as these wonderkins, people are like, why would I trust you? They're probably poisonous. It's, you know, it's building a lot of alienation inside the team and then externally the, or not externally on the other side there's people who've been there that have been building this stuff that made llama all this stuff and they're not getting a hundred million dollars but they know if they jumped over to open ai they might you know so then it's like it's throth maybe i don't know it's super weird let, let me ask a, a a devil's advocate uh, uh, scenario here what if i'm wrong we're all wrong about zuckerberg and actually he has a brilliant master plan and it's not Save scale. That. It's that. it's he has a new model and it's built on labeling or symbolic something that goes mm -hmm. to Gary Marcus's piece today, and and um, he's pulled it all. And, and Wang has this brilliant uh, perspective on this, and it's all about labeling is the key. Labeling is everything. It's not scale anymore, right? Um, and you're all going to be surprised soon. And Jan LeCun, who I respect and is there, has been arguing that LLMs have hit the wall. Just even though. Gary Marcus doesn't like Jan. They agree a lot. Um, Does Gary Marcus like anyone, though? That's a question I've always wondered. That's a wondered. good question, yeah. I mean, I, I, I like Gary, and it's fun to interact with him, but I do think he he plays a, oh, yeah, a yeah. curmudgeon it's, on TV. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, he wrote a piece in The Times, though, I thought was very good, that was um, uh, calm for Gary, because it was in The Times. He he sold his company, to his AI company, to Uber, and yeah. that established his... I guess his one of fighties and and after it's that he's it's just never, become the, the negative guy. You know, it's also never fun to to sell your company to Darth Vader. Yeah, yeah. However much money Darth yeah. gives you, a lot of a lot of it's just. I mean, you get cool outfits. They look a little bit batches, <laughs> but you know, <laughs> just a little. Some people, some people just like a little. That. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this highlight from intelligent machines you know we do the show every wednesday you can watch us do it live or as they say like and subscribe there's a link down below thanks <laughs>